this episode of Horse Shelter Heroes. We have horses come in a quarantine, and this time Corey says we have 13, um, which is more than we've had come out in a while. So that's super exciting. So today is the court date for the seizure that we had in Hickman County a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over there and kind of see what said. This is Vanessa. She came in the buyout last month also. She had pretty long feet. Today, Keith and I are breaking ground on a new construction project, and this one's gonna be pretty expensive. You don't want to miss a single second of Horse Shelter Heroes. So we have a lot of big changes coming here to Horse Plus Main Society. Um, with that, we have a couple working interviews coming out today. Somebody that has a little bit of experience with horses. We're not sure how much, but we're gonna find out when they get here. And we have so much happening around the shelter that there's some changes coming to management as well. And you'll hear about that soon. So it is the end of the month or closing close to the end of the month, um, which means that we have horses come in a quarantine and this time Corey says we have 13, um, which is more than we've had come out in a while. So that's super exciting. We're gonna go get them down here. We have all the horses from quarantine separated out by pastures of who needs grain and who is just getting um, hay. And we are running them down right now. So we are done bringing all the animals down. They're all in the pastures where they need to be. We brought 11 down today and we have three left up there that need to be rechecked by the vet. So today is the court date for the seizure that we had in Hickman County a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over there and kind of see what said. With everything, we did write up a very extensive report on all 34 animals that we'd got in that seizure case. So I hope that uh, these animals get the justice they deserve. All right, we're out here in the riding arena. Uh, we're gonna be stripping the rest of the boards off to, um, today. Uh, Tani's got some uh, renovations that she's planning on doing out here, so I'm just doing some prep work. Got all the boards off. Can't wait to see what happens with it next. So we're in the arena today. We're clearing everything out because Tanya's got some big plans that she won't share with anybody. So we got all the riding obstacles out. Now we got to take down all these fence panels and remove the swing gate. All right, we got all the riding um, obstacles out and all the gates down, so now we're ready for whatever she has planned. We came in this morning and we saw this amazing box of oranges somebody donated. It says, thanks for all you do, Marsha from Arizona. Marsha, thank you for the oranges. What an amazing gift. And they smell really good too. Can't you smell the oranges? They smell amazing. Thank you, Marsha. Hey, John, what you doing? Hey, um, so I've been trying to get this thing figured out. We were having issues with the group 
um, Facebook group. We couldn't post anything on the Facebook group and they finally fixed it. We can actually write posts. We can actually like uh, post a real photo or a poll. Um, but before it wasn't showing up on any of the accounts. So we were struggling with how to send the members videos or any posts. And that has been happening for the last probably week or two. So if you haven't seen anything, it's because Facebook was the problem. So now we can post and we should be able to do things for the group. We'll post something for you guys. So Haley and Macy were wonderful and identified that one of our outside kitties who's available for adoption was showing some abnormal bathroom habits. Um, one of the things that can happen with male cats is that they can get blocked. So the um, penis or urethra can get so inflamed that urine isn't able to safely pass. And this particular kitty is very under socialized, so we can kind of pet him a little bit. So. I just sedated him. Um, Haley and Macy caught him, which was wonderful. I just sedated him, and we are gonna do a full exam under sedation. We're gonna make sure that his penis and bladder are okay and that he's able to pass urine. And if he's not, we're gonna treat that to make sure that he's healthy and safe. So he's probably gonna need to stay inside and have medications for a couple days, but first we're gonna do an exam and figure out what's going on. Yeah, he's got a lot of inflammation in his urethra. And the penis yeah, doesn't wanna. Episode? exteriorize. How confident are we that this is a male cat? I mean, I'll have Dr. Gina double check, but that looks like a vulva to me. There's definitely no penis. Do you want to see? Yeah, that definitely does not look like. Does not look like there's penis. There's no area for a scrotum. Yeah. Tex is a long-ish term. Horse Plus resident who was um, supposedly male and um, Tux is female. So step one, identify the correct gender of your patient. Um, in the defense of Horse Plus, this cat is very, very difficult to, um, I gotta shave the abdomen. Sure. This cat is basically semi-feral. So she lets um, certain staff members pet her and she eats and stuff, but we haven't been able to like get a lot of close hands on her, so. I'm just clipping the abdomen so we can get a clearer picture. Would you agree that that looks like a space scar? Yeah. Looks and feels like a space scar. Okay. So spade female. Yay. While female cats can have um, lower urinary tract disease, like urinary tract infections, they're a lot less likely to be blocked. Um, her bladder is very, very small, which is great. It means she is urinating, but it also means that our top differential right now is a urinary tract infection, which fortunately we have a great treatment option for. We have a medication called Convenia. Um, it's a long acting full course of broad spectrum antibiotics in one subcutaneous. Okay, sweetie, you can be mad, but we're still gonna treat you. We just moved Tux into a crate for recovery. We're gonna keep her inside in our hospital for a couple days to make sure that she is fine and she is starting to wake up. She got up to date on all of her flea tick heartburn preventative vaccines, got some antibiotics. Um, her physical exam was largely normal, so she probably just has a UTI. Um, we don't have the capability to do a full urinalysis here, but if she's still abnormal, we'll take some urine to Honold Animal Hospital and verify. So yesterday was the preliminary um, hearing for the seizure case where we seized 34 animals. Now that was just the preliminary hearing to see if it would be sent to the grand jury. It did get approved. There are some things that I need to fix on the uh, seizure report. That way it reflects um, the address of where the animals were seized from and also the names of the defendants in the case. The um, detective that originally was leading the case, went up and testified. Um, unfortunately, they also wanted me to testify, so I was not in the courtroom during when they were up there on the stand, so I didn't get to hear exactly what they said, but they had pretty much stated the, the um, state that the animals were in. They was really poor. They went over this report and 
Um, the public defender decided to try to put in a motion to get this removed because it was missing the address and the names. So I'm going ahead and fixing that now. Dr. Gina and I and Kimberly and Caitlin just ran blood work on two of our horses. Jolene has been having an enlarged abdomen while not gaining weight. So we wanted to make sure she didn't have something systemic going on. Her blood work looks almost perfect. She's a little tiny bit dehydrated, very mildly dehydrated. Um, the signs that we're seeing with her are consistent with late term pregnancy, but her pregnancy, rectal, palpation, and ultrasound didn't show a baby. Could be that I was wrong. We sent off a blood test to check progesterone levels to confirm, but I'm really happy with how it looks today. Kidney and liver values and everything else looks great. Coco is a little miniature horse gelding that was an owner surrender. Um, we knew that in the past he had some liver disease and we rechecked his blood work today. He does have one elevated um, value AST, which can indicate hepatocellular injury. Coco also needs a surgical procedure on his eye. So we wanted to make sure that he's healthy enough to undergo that procedure. We're probably gonna try to do it under standing sedation instead of general anesthesia to keep that anesthesia a little bit easier on his body and gentler on his liver. Today is farrier day. Um, we have eight horses on the list. Most of them are from the last buyout group that we had that just came down out of quarantine yesterday. So we're gonna run them up and hopefully get all of them trimmed. Uh, this is Peta, AKA Val. Actually Val is her named name, but Peta is her registered name. She's blind. So I think she'll be good for her feet, but she might just be a little unsure. This is Butterscotch. Um, she came in the buyout last month. She actually just came out of quarantine yesterday. Um, so she's in the group that's getting their feet done today. She's a and she's kind of a brat. Um, she likes to stop it. She likes to stand on fencing and gates. Um, and apparently the farrier too. So. This is Dottie. Uh, she's also one of the horses that came in um, the last buyout. And so she came out of quarantine yesterday. This is Vanessa. She came in the buyout last month also. She had pretty long feet, like her, she hadn't had a farrier care in quite a while. So she likes to dance a little bit. So we gave her some dorm gel. And so she's standing really nicely right now so far. And so far her fronts have gotten trimmed up. They look a lot better. Um, she doesn't have the best confirmation, but we're working with her and it's gonna make her feel a whole lot better. Just finished trimming Vanessa back there. Um, her feet are actually in pretty good shape considering how bad they looked. She's definitely crooked and she tends to grow crooked because of that. So she'll be a higher maintenance horse, you need to keep her on a tight schedule and, and have somebody who knows what they're doing trimming her. But apart from that, I think she's looking pretty good. This is Fire. He is the stallion that also came out of the last buyout. He's only three. He hasn't quite been castrated yet, but he is on the schedule to do it tomorrow. And we think he just doesn't know a lot, but it looks like somebody taught him how to pick up his feet at one point in time. So we'll see how far we get with this trim. It's all right, bud. You're so jumpy. It's okay. <laughs>
Just got finished trimming fire out here. Uh, well, doing a half of a trim on fire. He did pretty good on his front end. Um, definitely nervous, but he was behaving. And his, his rear end, he wasn't acting up. He just wouldn't let us pick him up. He kept on moving away from us and we were chasing him all over and figured rather than riling him up and trying to do his feet right then, we just give him some more time to do some ground work and come back to him later. All right, we just got wrapped up with trims. We got eight done. It was a good day, very productive. Helped a lot of good horses. Hi, I'm Kimberly. I am the uh, vet assistant and animal health and husbandry person here at Horse Plus Humane Society, where we focus on um, helping horses through any stage of life. Um, we help young horses and old horses, but the plus in Horse Plus means that we also help dogs and cats and just about any other type of animal you could think of. This is Pilgrim, and he is one of the many horses that we have available for adoption here. You're also welcome to apply to adopt a dog or a cat, anything that might be a good fit for your family. If you're interested in adopting, you can visit our website. It's horseplushumanesociety.org and click on the adoptions tab and there you can see all of our available animals. And if you're interested in adopting one of them, you can just click on the animal's profile and then click on apply here. And then just don't forget to send your pictures to info at horsehumane to complete your application. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you here. This mare is Vanessa. She came in through our buyout program last month. She just came out of quarantine and she's young enough that she could be pregnant. We don't see any indicators of pregnancy, but I'm gonna preg check her just to be on the safe side. And we're gonna put the dental speculum on and make sure she doesn't need any dental work. Wow, she has fantastic teeth. You should look in this mouth. That's about the most perfect natural wear mouth you will see. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're beautiful. So you don't feel Anything that feels like baby. But to be totally on the safe side, we should probably grab the ultrasound. Dr. Gina and I just finished looking at Vanessa. She came in through our buyout program last month. Um, she's about 16 years old. She has beautiful teeth. We put the speculum on, she needed absolutely nothing done to her teeth. They looked wonderful. And then we pregnancy checked her and she has no positive signs of pregnancy. So hopefully um, she will be cleared for adoption very soon. Dr. Gina is going to pregnancy check. Um, her registered name is PETA, but Horse Plus named her Val and she is super duper sweet. Let me sedate her a little bit and then we'll walk her in there. I don't know if that's the caudal aorta that it's at the top of my hand before I've hit the pelvic rim, but it's big, like it's bulging. Ooh, do you feel a pulse, a strong pulse? Nope. Nope, okay. So you're feeling a bulge? On the top of my knuckles. On top? Okay. I think she's broken her pelvis. Because it's re it's strongly right sided. That is not normal. Okay, <laughs> I was like, that uh... is absolutely not normal. Because look, she's she's yeah. bilaterally asymmetrical. I think she had a severe pelvic injury. So Dr. Gina palpated Val today and discovered a very abnormal finding inside on the top of her rectum that is consistent with her pelvis being broken. It is stable. There's no active fracture, and she has no pain back there. 
She is quite abnormal on that right hind and it does feel related to her pelvis. We do not believe she is pregnant. She had no positive indicators of pregnancy. However, she does have udder development. So we'll watch her pretty closely. Sometimes we're wrong with rectal palpation and her teeth were fantastic. So she didn't need any dental work done today. She is the sweetest, sweetest girl. She follows you around when she hears your voice. So I hope she gets a really wonderful home. All of these horses came in the February buyout and they just came out of quarantine on Monday and we are doing their boosters right now. So we're gonna do Val in here. She's pretty easy to handle. So instead of bringing her through the chute cause she can't really see that well anyways, we're just gonna get all the things done right now out here. This is the last thing, I promise. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> she is not having this. This is Bo and he is getting his boosters today. All right, so we are all done with boosters. Time for something else. Today, Keith and I are breaking ground on a new construction project, and this one's gonna be pretty extensive. And right now I'm getting ready to do the plumbing for the drain, and I'm super excited about this. Can't tell you exactly what it is yet, but keep watching the episodes. It'll all be revealed here really soon. And we're hoping to have it done by June, so it can be put into use in June. No, end of May, Tawny said. Oh dear, that's less time than I thought. So yes, okay, end of May. So we gotta, we gotta stay busy on this one. This is the scary part, because I'm gluing the plumbing together. And then my measurements are off. Then when there's, you know, several thousand pounds of concrete on it, and it's wrong, that'd be a very bad day. So we're gonna get it right enough. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the game plan is right enough. And I think right enough is gonna be really close to perfect. So let's see how that works. But uh, gotta have all kinds of skills when you're saving animals. And plumbing is just one of the many skills we use around here. So the uh, toilet pipes are exactly where they're supposed to be within plus or minus an inch or two. And we're very happy for that. We've got the drain pipe number one in. No running pipe all the way over there for a sink. Again, can't tell you what the building is for, but uh, it's gonna be amazing. And then just pipe it out there and we're done. So what do you think, Keith? Almost done here. Yeah. I like. Pipes all in. We're just uh, hand tamping the uh, pipe so it doesn't get damaged when we Back fill it with the tractor, and uh, that's been a good day. Got it done a lot quicker than I thought, so. I always like getting things done faster than I think I can, so. And that was thanks to Keith's help, because Keith's always to help wherever he's at. So we are spring cleaning around and trying to reorganize stuff now that there are two full-time vets. We're trying to make things more efficient and ergonomic and all that good stuff. So we moved the small animal um, non-controlled drugs, like the things for GI and stuff like that. And here, where our small animals like to stay when they're being vetted, and then once they're ready to go out, they go out. So we put that there, and then that's going to be for like food and cleaning supplies. And then we have our e-collars and stuff like that. So we're just trying to organize things according to what each room is for. Organizing wise? Yeah! 
Um, everything is going great. We have really rearranged, I'm happiest at the moment about our small animal surgery room. It was pretty full in here and now we have a ton more space. And I think we'll really have streamlined our processes and efficiency and not kind of be stepping on each other's toes as much. We also moved our really nice, really expensive diagnostic equipment, our radiograph equipment, our ultrasound and our blood machines are now all in a much cleaner area. So that really helps maintain the health of that equipment for longer. We are wrapping up a really busy day at Horse Plus. We didn't do any surgeries or medical procedures today. We kind of overhauled our hospital. We organized our small animal surgery room, our small animal surgical prep and recovery room, and our large animal standing surgery room and moved a bunch of stuff around and reorganized. So it feels really good and we're ready to start working in our clean and organized new spaces. Our volunteer days will take place the first Wednesday of every month from nine to noon, weather permitting. We will be doing projects like painting and cleaning and other things that will be pretty messy. So make sure you wear clothes that you don't mind getting dirty. At some point in the day during our volunteer time, you will also get to spend a little time with our mascots, Dino and Cowboy. If you want to come and spend a little time at our facility, we highly encourage you to come out to our volunteer day and we look forward to seeing you. So Jethro had some hawk injections last week. Um, we have noticed that um, he can be a little um, off in the hind end, and we're hoping that these injections have helped. Um, Kimberly is going to do the riding evaluation on him because he has some of those hind issues. I don't feel comfortable hopping on because of my size, and Kimberly is perfect for this. So here we go. I would say he's markedly improved. Like yeah. to me, if I saw this horse on a trail, I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, that horse is lame. Yeah. I don't think he's ever gonna be super duper duper sound, but I think yeah. that's probably true of every 16 year old thoroughbred oh. who had a racing career and then did upper level dressage. But he might be great for some kid's first horse. Yeah. Slash Dr. Gina and I might have to have a doctor appointment so we can <laughs> ride him. <laughs> that's also fine. Just kidding, we won't take the sound horses if someone else wants him. He is so cute. <laughs> Dr. Gina and I are super duper happy right now yes. because um, our joint injections experiment is two for two. He is an upper level dressage horse. He was an owner surrender and um, he just has the best personality. He's super in your pocket, super duper sweet. He has great ground manners. And we wanted to make sure that we could get him sound for light riding. Um, and he looks fantastic today. So we're so excited. We're really, really happy. Um, he is a super <laughs> special boy. So we can't wait to see him find his forever home. So Jethro is available for adoption. Um, he is a level three, so he would need somebody that is a little bit more advanced because he does have all those fancy buttons. Um, I believe that he's the type of horse that would love a job and to be able to even do some of that stuff that he knows how to do just to keep his mind going. So today I'm cleaning out the training barn, I'm getting ready for our check dedication from Bob Barker on Monday. We have 23 round bells today. So we'll get them unloaded and stacked for you, put them in the bar. We have an amazing neighbor who decided to um, donate her canned dog food. Unfortunately, she had lost her dog recently and had some leftover food and donated her leftover food to us. And we are just so thankful um, for donations for the small animals. So 
Thank you so much, Jillian, for the dog food. All right, so our adopters are here. They are interested in Drifter and Littlefoot, so I'm gonna be tacking both of them up and riding them around for them to see. So do you think you want to adopt Drifter today? I do want to adopt Drifter today. That's awesome. Let me get an adoption <laughs> picture. Great real quick while you're up there. If you want to ride out to the middle a little bit more, I'll get a picture of you up there. I like him, yeah. Are you sure? Yes. I don't want to get him home and find out. Okay, how many times am I supposed to say yes? Well, actually one more time. Do you think you're gonna adopt <laughs> Littlefoot today? No. No? <laughs> All serious for the camera, please. Yeah, I do. You're yeah. gonna adopt him? <laughs> yes, I love him. Okay. He's really See, sweet. See, I made you say it three more times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The big bell. Cut your hand and yeah. ring it. Let's go. Ready? Oh yes, and don't forget to move uh, little foot and drifters photos from the Looking for Love to Found Love. We're Cindy and Crystal, and we came to adopt two horses, and we chose Little Foot and Drifter. They do great work here, and I admire anybody that takes on the task of rescuing horses. Come adopt. Kind of Come adopt, please. Thank you. Yes. So the adopters just left and thankfully they got Littlefoot and Drifter both um, and they're going to use them as trail horses and we cannot wait to see updates on them.